working with uh, Dave here. We're going to show you uh, what we're doing and uh, how we're doing it here. Why don't you tell us a little about the boat and what the surface we're working on. At Second Wind Sailing, we, we restore classic sailboats. So this is a 1973. Obviously, the, the boat had been painted a few times, so I sit down all the day, you know, get myself to a known substrate, prime paint. This boat's probably about 50% complete, but we're going to show how a new product called Allcraft 2000 is repairable just like in the same fashion you repair gel coat. So we're just trying to show you about maintaining a finish. Trevor's business, First Mate Yacht Care, um, they'll, after I get done restoring a boat, I would recommend to a client keep, have this guy continue to maintain your boat. Aaron, folks, is out of estimation, paint. Uh, glass, whatever work you need as far as that. that. I'm more of the buffering cosmetic, that kind of maintenance store guy. Um, what we did here, this is all Craft 2000 again, which is more repairable than all grip. All grip makes great products. The original all grip is a very, very strong paint that will last you a long, long time. Uh, all Craft 2000 is a little easier to repair if you have a scuff you need to uh, uh, scuff it, put on much more paint, and take care of it that way. Uh, Products. What we did here is we hit this with we hit this with 1500 here just to kind of scuff it up and show you guys how cloudy this is. It is uh, we we both have a lot of problems. We go to shows like this and somebody will say, oh, I got a 1970 this, you know, you couldn't bump this or you couldn't fix that. And we really are trying to show that even if your boat looks like this and it doesn't have any shine, we can bring it back. And I'd like to think that hitting it with 1,500 or 1,000 bit sandpaper is worse than if you just left your boat out and it had a little bit of oxidation. Even with a good coat of all grip, if you don't take care of your boat, you don't keep it waxed, you will start to have a little bit of stuff building up there. That's fine. Your paint is still good. You can polish that and you can build a great shiny boat. So, if your boat starts to fade, don't lose hope. Let me show you what we can do here. Whether this is all grip or gel coat, um, something like a scratch is in it, you know, old compound pad or hit the dock, you know, smudges, any, anything like that. Fender rub, you got some rough fenders that have some dirt on it, you know, maybe some zebra muscles on your fenders rubbing up against your boat. We're going to go after it. You can see the tape line here. So that's not what we've done before. I'm going to walk, walk this way. The product I'm using here is 3M Imperial. This stuff isn't cheap. This bottle will set you back 45 bucks. Uh, it is a oil based compound. This product is set to start at 800 grit. So we could hypothetically sand this whole thing with 800 grit sandpaper. We'll be able to buff it. Whether I have scratches or oxidation, I can start out with as low as 600 grit sandpaper, wet sanding all the time. The, the water does two things for me. It cleans the sandpaper so that I'm sanding with the sandpaper, not with the grit that's stuck in the sandpaper or dirt or anything. So I'm cleaning the sandpaper with the water and I'm lubricating the sandpaper so it slides smoothly over the surface. I don't I don't ever want it to find it. Like, then you get you know certain spots in there that are that are bad. So whether these are more scratches or oxidation or any imperfections in your paint or gel coat, you know, wet sand them out. Basically ever aim to like a 45 straight up and down, anything I can to try to get it as completely flat and matte finish as I can. Whether it's gel coat or paint, you know it's it's scary that you gotta make it worse before you make it better. You're gonna take all the luster out of your boat before Trevor brings it back. A lot of people also ask, bowl pad or foam pad? Uh, this is a 3M Waffle foam pad, 5723. This is the standard, especially with gel coat. This is a very aggressive cut. If you have oxide gel coat, this is what we're going to use. Uh, the little pockets are great for holding compound and moving it around. Um, I'm going to use this yellow pad, which is a little softer than the white. There are shades, uh, even with the wool, there's yellow as uh, softer and white as a uh, Cut. So think of the yellow would be like uh, 1,200 grit, and uh, excuse me, the yellow would be a, a higher grit, the white would be a lower grit, whether with foam or wool. So I do have a uh, a higher grit foam pad. I'm going to start here. When I'm buffing, I always want to keep the buffer moving. If I keep it in one spot, you better get the oil. If you don't want to dig into one spot, then I try and do a little half moon, like a C shape. The other mistake people do is they'll go like a typewriter. And they go down, and they go down, and they think that that's a good way to get even coverage 
and to know that they've hit everything. It's better to keep the buffer moving, keep it at irregular angles, and just go over everything once or twice. So you know you've worked the product, and uh, know that what kind of speed are you spinning wheel at? Uh, this is, I like to go at about 2,000 to 3,000 RPM. I would guess I'm at about 2,500. Yeah. I've done this before. So low, low speed at the beginning? Yeah. Yep. Does anyone have any questions while he's bumping? Trevor and I both actually use the same product. We didn't, we didn't re talk about this, but I always start with the Imperial compounded cutting material. That's my 3M. 3M makes great product, but a sandpaper compound, really good stuff. This they consider step. This they consider step one. Step two is the machine polish. Step two is made to polish off the strokes we get now from this. And then the third one, which is only necessary on dark colored balls and things like this, this is the ultra fine machine polish. This this is only made to buff out the swirls left from number two. So we would never go start with two, start with three. Sometimes you start with two and the ball's already in decent condition. Hold on. This is with the Imperial. From where you're sitting, I'm sure it looks perfect. I can see just a, a little bit matching this up. We really went at the boat for demonstration purposes. There's some deeper stuff that we're going to have to go back. I can continue to wet sand. I can start over now with wet sand again, and you can, you can bump it again. And, and that's fine. You know, just the, the idea of having sand it, bump it real quick. That took me two minutes. Now we can see, oh, we got a, a couple deep things there. No problem. We're going to go back and hit that. But does everybody agree this looks pretty darn good coming from that? Um, I was going to show you to hit it with the step two on uh, paint. Would like to just really make sure it's perfect, but this honestly, it looks great. As you're looking at it up close here, you won't notice step two. It, it, de it depends on that. Yeah, I mean, it's right a boat show, and people are going like this. I should step two and three. But I'll, but, uh, I'll, I'll hit this while we're talking. That's pretty, pretty darn good. I'll hit this with step two just while we're talking. But uh, you'll see when I'm putting this on. This is all the step one was really good and you might be able to see little dots. That is the grit in there. Look this, at how thin step two is. This is much thinner, and you'll see when I put it on, it's uh, more of a liquid, less of a paint. Uh, one more thing. Uh, I put on a lot of product. I've talked to you know the product reps and guys who represent the product and they say, man, you don't need all that. I, I say I like it. I like knowing that I have that much product on there. And whenever I teach employees how to buff, I want to make sure that they are working enough product. Uh, more so with Joko than with paint. If you have the buffer, and especially you have a foam wheel, and you're working, let's say, a corner, uh, let's say right here, if you have a common spot, you're working the buffer right there, that side's getting real hot. It's spinning 2,500 times a minute. Um, that will heat up and burn your gel coat. You'll have an orange spot where that gel got too hot and it cooked. You're going to have to go in, sand that, start over. I just, like having the Just like when I was wet sanding, he wants to keep the surface lubricated. I like that he uses a lot of compound. The, the, the sandpaper itself, when I'm wet sanding, can get really hot if you, if you don't. You know, I've had sandpaper get hot in my hand. Everyone has if you're not using water. And that can dull the finish and start to soften the finish and things. So I, I like that he's keeping it very, a very wet edge as he's going. Are you going faster now? Uh, what do you do? This buffer is actually busted. I can't change the speed out. Uh, okay. But, uh, 20, uh, 2,000 to 3,000 is typically the sweet spot, a little lower with a heavier compound. So a heavier compound with a slower speed. Yeah. I see a problem in it, oh, I got, I'm going to have to go here pretty quick. <laughs> and uh, you guys might not be able to notice this, but I can notice a little deeper buster. We still have a couple of scratches in there. But uh, it's not hard, you know, in, in five minutes we showed you guys how to go from here to there. This is, I would say, equivalent. If you had a boat on Lake Michigan and you left it outside for 
all summer and you only washed it twice, your jump coat's definitely going to look like this. Depending on where your bone is, maybe your paint's going to start to look like this. It's going to get dull. Uh, the all grip reps are going to tell you, oh, you're never going to bump this, you're never going to wax this, this is all grip. No, 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 no. Well, we have customers say, oh, well, I don't want you washing my boat with anything but all wash and this all care polymer sealant. They're trying to protect their warranty. They don't want you guys picking up a buffering wheel for the first time, having a few drinks, and swirling up your boat, and then calling them saying, oh, my paint's screwed up. I want right? to get my warranty a whole new paint job. They don't want that, so they, take, they make their warranty very stringent. What we're doing here is we're polishing. I'm not grinding into the paint. All grip is extremely, extremely hard. We are just polishing the surface, making sure there's no contaminants, nothing on the surface. That's how we're keeping it so shiny. There's nothing to be scared of buffing your boat. Um, keep the questions coming, guys. Keep us talking. Yes, sir. Diamond sea glaze, the glaze they put on the exterior of the bath, not tinted on the inside to protect the glass. If you do have a glaze or a finish on your glass and you don't know it, you're going to figure it out real quick. Well, you're, you're heavily oxidized hull itself, right? I can start out with, you know, we're starting out with the most aggressive, that would be the sandpaper. That's what we're trying to show. If you got a boat that's been sitting in salt water for a few seasons, you know, you're really you're beating on your boat. I'd rather have a boat that sat in Lake Charlevoix for two years uncovered in the winter and in the sun than a boat that was down in Fort Lauderdale for six months. I could bring the boat to Michigan that quicker than I could bring the boat to Lauderdale back. Salt, that's tough. Might have to get in the wet scene and it would be unlikely that just puffing it with the imperial period would bring you back to this. Non-skid, it's very difficult to buff non-skid, especially if you have if you have goodier stuff. What kind of non-skid? Can you describe your non-skid? Is it spray down? What boat is it? Yeah. It's an S2. It's an S2, so it has diamond non-skid. Yeah. That the diamond non-skid is it is possible. What we usually do for that is a wool pad, not a foam pad, because it would chew up the foam pad pretty quick. But a wool pad, probably a white wool pad with the imperial. Uh, the other thing, when you're doing the non-skid, you don't have to worry as much about swirl marks. You know, it's not going to show. You can't hit it with heavier stuff. So, just from what we've been talking about here, I would hit that with uh, a white wool pad. A white wool pad. Uh, buff it, uh, just like we did here. 
you're gonna when you're done buffing, you're gonna have a lot in your non skin. You're gonna have to go after it with a rag, maybe a brush, to get all that compound out of there. But it is possible to restore it the same way. We're talking about the same thing. Whatever the surface, whether uh, gel coat or paint, we're just talking about oxidation, calcium, iron, these minerals, this crap in the water that's dried on your boat, dirt, soot. Um, it's just forming that film layer, film thin layer, and we're just polishing that off. That's that is the essence of what we're trying to tell you guys. We're just restoring. Something that I've tried on, on an S2 actually, um, it's, it's much like wet sanding. I used a scrub brush and scotch pole. The, the stuff you pour out with, so that's almost like wet sanding it in there, and I, and I was able to get it really, you know, really shiny in that sense. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, these these products, uh, these compounds, it's a, a a liquid paste with a little bit of grit to it. It's an abrasive. Yeah. And there's other products, soft scrub and bleach or uh, scotch brite, the liquid cleaners. Those are are gritty products. I don't think I have any with me here. But um, another thing we, we use, let's say this is the same thing. We're using the grit to go after something. Let's say if you have paint on your hands and you're a mechanic, you use this stuff to get your hands clean. It's gritty. We use this if you have uh, vinyl or leather seats. We'll put this on the seats with a little bit of simple green, a little bit of degreaser, and then we work that with a rag or a soft brush, and it's going to get in the creases in your vinyl, the creases in your leather, and we're using that compound to agitate and to get the things out. The abrasives are great. Obviously, with leather or vinyl, we're going to use something a little bit softer. These uh, these products, especially the 3M ones, Imperial came out because the old Perfected has too much uh, benzene in it. They have problems shipping it in Michigan for one. Uh, you know, California, I don't think they're even allowed to sell the stuff. But um, it is a professional grade product. You never use 3M finesse? Yes. Uh, 3M also, so we're using the Perfected and the Imperial products. Finesse it and uh, Perfected Finesse it. Uh, I believe there's one more I can't think of right now. Those are abrasives in the same grit range. They're much cheaper. They're not diminishing abrasives. So these products, uh, the Imperial for one, starts out at 800 to 600 to 800 grit. And as you're working this, it's diminishing. So imagine if you have a piece of sandpaper with the big bit, you start sanding it, you're getting out the deep scratches. As you work it, these little little silicone beads are rubbing and breaking themselves down slowly. So the beads get a little smaller, and that's going to polish out more scratches, give it a higher gloss, and it just breaks it down until you saw that just a little bit of oil that I wiped off with a rag. In the old days, you know, I, I started off boats uh, seven years ago, and we, we, we did <laughs> Let me tell you guys about the old days, let me tell you. Um, we had to use a heavy cut, and we'd have to use a medium cut, and we'd have to finish it with a fine cut. And you saw us just bring this back with just the one compound. It's worth the 50 bucks, so you're going to get better results than if you use the heavy, medium, and fine cut. It it's, is such a, a hard product. job to buff the entire boat. Your arms are going to be so sore, yeah. and you'll be like, you know, if that saves you 25% of the time, yeah. so you're going to be thankful. Yeah. You, you would have paid $100 for it. You guys got all your this is all craft 2000. Which is all, which is all grip. All grip is a two-part linear polyurethane. All craft by the same company is a two-part linear acrylic are slightly different with uh, gel coat and paint as far as oxidation goes. Your gel coat is going to be a little more porous. The way they put it in the mold, there's going to be air bubbles in the mold, and you're going to have contaminants getting their way in there. So the, the, the oxidation is definitely going to be deeper with gel coat. You're going to have to hit it with a more aggressive compound to get in there further. And what was my second point? I forget my second point. But uh, you're going to polish it the same. You're going to tend to be a little more aggressive with a gel coat. It's not as hard in a non for as permeable finish like the Algrim, which is a superior product. Do you use a white uh, <coughs> Oh yeah, yep. Uh, this is 
this is uh, the, the heaviest cut, the, the firmest, coarsest pad we use. Um, but, yep, but, yep, yep. For your case especially, you're going to want to use this. If you use this yellow pad, it's not even going to touch it. It's, you'd, you'd be buffing it, you'd take off the the littlest bit, but it'd still be cloudy, and you'd say, what's going on? I'm using the right product. Start, start heavy. Yep. And this is uh, another thing we're talking about, uh, talking about the price here. These are premium 3M pads, as you can see. You know, this is a just an auto supply pad, it's clear finish. Give us this stuff or anything like that. Do I see that? Like yeah. We, 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 we're spending extra money. Same one? Yep. Yeah. And then out of our pockets, so yep. we can get it done quicker and we can do a better job. And not only does it do a better job, but you know, these pads, uh, to give you an idea of how much we beat on these pads, this is no waffle. That was that, and now it's it's nothing. We can, we, well, this boat would be less than less than a quarter of a pad's use on this boat. Yeah, you're in my yeah. And if this becomes your job, but, you uh, make it so good at it. You know, like Gary was saying, that the 3M pads are a great investment. They do last a lot longer. Yeah. And I think 3M has really gotten good at knowing, you know, this is our heavy grit. We're going to start our heavy grit here and our medium grit here. Products all across the board. This is uh, Orca. I'm showing it because it's a water-based compound, not an oil-based compound. Sometimes if you're using an oil-based compound, you'll have a little bit of a, a fake shine, we call it. You don't know the job, it looks great, and a week later, it doesn't look as great. Um, that's, that's not a typical example, but the water-based compounds, they work a little easier, they're easier to clean up, and when we work in green marinas, where if you guys are really concerned about the environment, they do not have as many harsh chemicals, it's still a diminishing abrasive, so it will still break itself down. Oh, yeah, that's a great, uh, great thing that we you haven't covered yet. Oh, uh, the, the question was, once you're done polishing, what do you do? Uh, we really like the 3M uh, flagship. Everything that he's been doing so far is, has been the abrasives we're talking about and the polishing. And it, it's not it's not a UV barrier yet or protected or anything like that. Yep, we are. Uh, we have gotten rid of the bad stuff and we have gotten back to square one, a good boat, let's say a boat that just came out of the factory. Now we got to protect that. Uh, obviously, wash boat, or you stay on top of your boat. 3M flagship and the black bottle. This is actually the cleaner, cleaner wax. I didn't mean to bring this, but they make a uh, Guayers flagship wax. And a black bottle like this, it's very easy to work with. You don't have to worry about it cooking in the sun and uh, causing problems like that. It'll give you a long-lasting, deep, great shine. It's good for protecting. But it will not remove any scratches. It will, you know, it's not used as, as any sort of a compound or abrasive or anything like that. Yep. You gotta. You gotta make sure you got a good, good substrate, good base to uh, back side. Do you hand apply that or do you pump that? We, uh, we use that with the uh, smaller machine buffers. Uh, sure, it makes a good one, but it's about 150 bucks, or you can get one at Walmart. This is one that we do at Walmart. Or you can hand apply it. Yep. You can hand apply it um, for a really great finish, a dual orbital, about a day big, applying it like that, and wipe it off by hand. Is that a good uh, Carnuba base? Nope, uh, we do not use any Carnuba products. The Carnuba tends to build up in the sun. It, it can yellow. It's difficult to put on multiple coats of the Carnuba without having any yellowing or uh, caking effect. I really think the synthetic waxes are have surpassed any Carnuba or any natural waxes. Yes. Uh, Polyglow. Without making enemies, I hope they can't hear us over there. Uh, I have had Polyglow experiences, and uh, I do not recommend it at all. If you look at the look at their the picture, they, they show you a heavy oxidized boat that looks like this, and they wipe it out. The Polyglow is just seeping in there and sealing it and putting a gloss on there. And those pictures look darn good. But uh, that stuff is going to crack on you. It's not going to last forever. And uh, we just did a 46 Bertram this year. And we started going at it. And we had to go after it with steel wool, with our quadruple out steel wool. It was the only thing. Our buffers couldn't touch it. 
it just looked horrible. It looked like it was peeling in all sorts of places. The customer bought that poly prep, which is supposed to be able to strip it. We couldn't strip it with that. We couldn't strip it with acetone. We just could not get that off there. And the customer, uh, an older older gentleman, actually decided that he would do a lot of the scotch bright and steel wool because he didn't want to, because it was taking us so long to do it. He, I don't recommend poly prep. Here, any closing comments on poly prep? It's it's just a uh, you know it's lipstick on a pig you know yep, it's, it's just a, a great temporary fix that will eventually cause you more heartache and pain. Yep. And anyway. Talking about poly glue. People call me, ask me how to take it off and how to put it on. I could uh, I could wipe this with WD-40. It's going to be real shiny. Yep. yep. For a few days and then you can have that. But the way we're doing it here is we're actually getting it back to a good surface yep. and then putting a coat of wax on. We're not just putting wax on to make it look shiny, we're actually rubbing it out and making it shiny. Yep. We, we have a, a split finish, you guys are welcome to run up here once we're done and if you don't ask any questions, um, keep them coming guys. What else are we talking about? Your wood, uh, your team. Are we, you see tall fans? Uh, we did have a, uh, you actually missed the Zen of Wood talk at 10.30 and uh, I think we'll See all this. We can talk about that later. Yeah, why don't, you, why don't you come up after that? We'll try and focus on the paint here. Uh, and, uh, last, we, we are going to talk more about paint versus gel coat later today at 2.30 as well. Uh, on the deck, there's uh, epoxy or things that are kind of... I'm going to 324. Oh, that's now? Uh, the question was, when you have epoxy and, uh, let's say, other adhesives, um, let's say ferret compounds on the deck, So the question is uh, how to handle things other than scuffing and oxidation on your gel coat. Uh, if it's something like bearing compound or an industrial adhesive, you're going to have to use glue force. Um, Gary would know more about the stripping compounds to use that, but if you're using something that's strong enough to take that, you're going to be damaging the boat. Things like, uh, you know, I, I think of on a scale of removing things from gel coat, you've got fairing compound and the really strong epoxy. You're going to have to go off that with a little bit of force, and like Garrett said, start sanding down I mean, until you're getting your finish. Things like varnish are softer and easier, especially the super hard varnish, rather than a uh, harder epoxy. And how about staining? The staining, yeah. if it's gel coat, that's the problem with gel coat and being porous, right? Um, as, as far as stains, it, it really depends on the stains. There's, uh, we see stains, everything from cormorant droppings are very acidic that can uh, cause problems. Uh, having a clean, a good surface that's protected is going to make it harder for things to stain your boat. So the answer is you should have bought the boat last year which had these stains. He bought it. I bought it like that, yeah. We have down there, which is probably bigger than uh, bigger stains. Yep, and at, at it, all the fish they eat, it's very acidic. Uh, ice and glass, you know, the, the, the feces will do bad things to ice and glass and all that. But um, with gel coat, especially if you, if you have an oxidized boat, think of uh, something like a, a coil reef, a plaque on your teeth. That calcification, that's just crud. It's crusting out the building, and that's porous as well. So if you have dropping, you have an oxidized surface, whatever it is, it's going to get in that porous crap, and it's going to be easier to stain. If you have gel coat that's clean and protected with a wax, you already have wax in those holes, it's going to be hard to stain. Try buffing it, go for it. I would think of it just like oxidation or just like the scratches you put in, and you can even like start by wet sanding and finish it. Yeah. 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 For, for non-skid decks? Well, for um, the, any of the smooth surfaces, 
this application is best. We recommend buffing, polishing, and then using a uh, protective wax for UV and to keep it clean. Uh, as far as the non-skid, the, uh, the non-skid areas don't suffer as much. They, uh, they, they don't get the same abuse uh, just in being a, a shiny surface that doesn't oxidize as much. We don't recommend waxing decks because we don't want you to fall. Uh, I, I guess I would say keep it clean, and if you have to, buff them every so often. But the, the non-skid is, is rarely the issue. People say, how do you get my nice eyebrow shiny, not how do you get the, uh, the stuff here shiny. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to get the vertical stuff, yep. not the horizontal. Well, buff it and keep it clean. That's it. Yep. A lot of the deck leaders now have a Teflon additive. Uh, I find that helps to keep things clean. Uh, Starbright makes one, and Westbury makes one, uh, but PTEF is a, some, is a Teflon alternative, and that's good for getting in the roots and cleaning that. And that's one of the big problems with judging is the and so we can fill those pores with the wax and the PTEF. So like Garrett, Garrett said, first, instead of buffing out the wheel, if you have some steps or a synopsis that's uh, getting faded, chalky, white, just get uh, some um, soft scrub and a stiff plastic brush and just go at it. That's going to be very pretty. That's going to knock off a lot of that crap and it's going to give you a much cleaner surface. Soft scrub bleach? Yep, yeah, just uh, the soft scrub paste. Yes, sir. I don't have any to show off. Yep, and that, that's what we're talking about. Non skid exactly areas. I wouldn't recommend using a plastic brush. No, this is uh, like the, the, the powder of the paste. Something like even bar Barkeeper's friend or uh, something like that has a little bit of good to it. Like that. Yes, sir. What do you feel about the um, dagger of um, using the um, gel uh, uh, coat seal? Can you name the, uh, the product name, the brand name? I don't know. I, I don't know. Just before you did. The alternative. I have a lot of. Uh, Particularly on the uh, gel coat. Like overspray particulate? Well, uh, overspray you can remove with a, a clay bar or you can buff it out. What we're, uh, we, there's a lot of snake oil out there, such as polyglow and things like that. That is, uh, it's a, they used to have that turtle wax stuff or wax once a year for your car, you know, wax it once and it's good for how long. Uh, I don't think that these products ever really deliver on what they're saying. And we do recommend you, you keep a good finish, you keep the, the trusted products that aren't. This product isn't claiming that it's going it's to last you nine months or it's going to last you that long. It is not that strong of a product. You know, it's, not, um, it's not trying to be something it's not. If you, if you bought a boat, you got to keep it clean, you got to keep up on it. I don't have a, uh, a gel coat sealer or a longer lasting sealer than um, what I'd recommend with typical wax. This is the McGuire's flagship wax. Um, some other waxes, a lot of people, especially down in Florida, we find like the colonite stuff. It comes in a bottle like this. This is actually the, the leather cleaner, but colonite insulator wax. Uh, again, that's a, that's just a wax, so it's you want to have a good surface to start with, and you're going to form up a barrier on that. It's not going to do anything for taking off the particulate or taking off any oxidation. 